yeah, that's not in tune. And I'm not going to tune it up either because those strings being so old are going to snap. Anyway. Hello, welcome to Dulce America. Just looking at a uh, wall hanger instrument here that I'll be using as a demonstration for this week's episode. But before I go any further, I would like to point out the t-shirt I'm wearing. It's brand new. It's still got new t-shirt smell. That's kind of cool. Uh, not too long ago, I asked some people on Facebook to send me some t-shirts that I could wear as a promotion for them and as a way of uh, giving you some exposure to some fantastic artists. And one of the first ones that came in was from Wendy Sanj. Not only does she play Mountain Dulcimer, but an array of other instruments and is a very talented and very wonderful lady. If you want to check Maurer out from Wendy Sanj, go to wendysanj.com. Just click on the link. There is not a link there to click on. I will make it a link you can click on, and uh, you can go there and find out more. She's also on Reverb Nation and on Facebook as well. Well, I promised for the new year that we would get into some more fundamental stuff to begin. I know many people got dulcimers for the holidays and are just starting off on their uh, musical journey with the instrument. So one of the things I want to go over that's really good for anybody who's got an instrument is the care and feeding of that instrument, how to keep it in good shape. And uh, I collect dulcimers, and uh, this is actually not just merely a collected dulcimer. This is the original dulcimer that... I began playing with Mojave back in 1999. It's a full craft. It was built in 1994, and as you can tell, it has been through an awful lot. I'll get in close here so you can kind of see some of the stuff that's happening there on the surface. I have really played this instrument to pieces and have retired it, and it's been hanging on the wall for a while. There's a lot of wear up there. I anchor a lot in that section of the fret of the uh, soundboard, and. Um, Back when I was playing this, I didn't know much about conditioning your instrument, and so it went through a lot of changes. Heat, cold, sweat, blood, water, beer, you name it, it has been through a lot of stuff. And it's still in pretty good shape, but it's been hanging on the wall for an awful long time. So this is a very extreme example of what happens if you do not uh, condition your instrument. Now, depending on whether your instrument has a lacquer finish or not, it makes a huge difference. This one actually did have a bit of a lacquer finish, and I don't know if you can see right there, but you can see where that lacquer has start to come off a bit. Right there on the edge of the fretboard where it's raised. So, you can do a lot to protect your lacquer from coming off, because once that lacquer goes away, there's nothing but bare wood that's exposed. As you can see right there, the wood has begun to come away. And a lot of that's from the rubbing of my finger, again, anchoring right there on the edge of the fretboard. And so sometimes there's not much you can do about it except for reapply lacquer and keep after it. But as I always say, an instrument that looks like hell is a loved instrument and has been played an awful lot. But still, you want to keep your instrument not only looking well, but playing well, because uh, temperature changes will do a lot of things and humidity will also do a lot of things. The wood can swell and crack, or it can shrink and crack due to extremes in temperature, and also uh, just not conditioning the wood will do that as well. So I'm not gonna condition this one, not today anyway. I need to put a coat of something on there, but it's not gonna happen today. But what I do have is Woody, my Folkcraft double over here, and um, I'm gonna condition him up to keep him nice and pretty. And the first thing I'm going to show you here is when is a good time to do this on your instrument. And you don't really have to do it all the time. I would suggest doing it depending on how often you play uh, and how often you're using it and how murky your dulcimer is looking. I would say maybe five or six times a year. Um, but a good time to do it is when you change your strings. And if you don't change your strings often, you're missing out on some of the best sound you can get out of your instrument because the strings have a very short lifespan, especially with our oily fingers touching the strings all the time. And uh, the strings have little tiny, tiny microscopic um, openings in those strings and in them can get stuck dirt, gunk, snot, you know, whatever's on your fingers. If you use any sort of like fingerese or, or a, you know, a fast fret or something like that. All that stuff gets into those little microscopic cracks 
and it just dulls the sound of the strings. And just normal oxidization will also make the strings sound bad after a while. And when should you change your strings? When they start looking really bad. I'm not sure if that's going to focus on the string by itself. When they start looking really peaked, or if you can move your fingers along them and get like black marks and stuff like that, or if visibly you see patches of rust, it might be a good time to change those strings out because they have outlived their usefulness and nothing sounds as awesome and as beautiful as a nice fresh set of strings. If you want some information on how to change your strings, if you just got a mountain dulcimer, you can go to Dulcimerica episode number eight, Stringer Than Fiction is the title. And not only do I show you how to change your strings, but also uh, how to play some chords and have some fun like that. So I've taken the strings off of Woody, my double neck, and what we are gonna use for the conditioning project today is Howard Feed and Wax. I was recommended this by dulcimer builder, performer, and instructor, David Beatty. And as a dulcimer luthier, he knows the best thing about conditioning wood. And this is a fantastic preservative for the wood. Now, there is another step involved with really doing stuff with furniture, uh, which this is essentially a furniture uh, application. But for instruments and a well-maintained instrument, this is really all you need. It's made out of uh, beeswax and orange oil. And, uh, it's just really, really good. I use it on my Native American flutes, on my dulcimers. Any instrument made of wood gets this. I'm going to shake it up there a little bit. And I've got a couple of shop rags here. Just basic shop rags. You can use uh, lint-free cloths, microfiber cloths, whatever you like. You want to have uh, three of these rags. One to apply the stuff with one to wipe it off, and then one for buffing it up and giving it a little bit of a shine. So let's take a look at Woody here and see what we've got. Woody's in pretty good condition. I haven't had him for very long, but I still play him all the time. So, you know, there's a lot of dirt and dust and stuff like that. And theoretically speaking, you could use the feed and wax and just kind of blather it on there, but I like to kind of wipe him down a little bit and get some of the excess dust and dirt off so that we don't have to deal with it. I leave my instruments out all the time, so I'm tempted to reach out and play them as often as I can. If you leave your instrument in the case, it's not going to get as dirty, uh, dirty as dusty and dirty. I just made a new word, dirty. That's kind of cool. Okay, he's pretty good, he's pretty clean there. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do after cleaning is to take the feed and wax, and we're gonna blob on a little bit on there. Mash it in a little bit into there. And then we're just gonna wipe it on to the wood. Cover all the area there. And I go in sections so I kind of know where I'm at and what I'm doing. But you can go just straight across the instrument, so I'll go ahead and do the fretboard. Nothing is more amazing than having just a beautiful, shiny fretboard there. And once again, this is going to prevent you getting cracks, depending on the kind of wood you've got on your instrument. It's just going to prevent you from getting that stuff drying out because it does feed the wood as the name implies and the wax serves as a bit of a protectant against the elements if you are playing outside a lot especially if you're doing gigs with your dulcimer group or you're playing out where there's you know you're in the great wide open and there's dirt and dust and water and drunk people you never know what you're going to have ending up on your instrument. Until you get home and look at it, and you're like, good God, man. Who have I been hanging out with? Oh, me. I think I've actually got, when I used to smoke, I've got cigarette ashes still in my sound holes. It happened. 
So we're just wiping that down all along there. And just don't worry about trying to get it off now. You want to leave as much of it on as possible because we're going to let that dry. Okay, so we got the front there. And I'm going to roll it over. There goes one of my bridges. I'm going to get the side and the back. And this stuff is not dangerous to have on your body at all. So, you know, wash your hands afterwards, but don't worry about getting it on you. It is kind of a greasy mess, though. So wear, wear some stuff that you don't mind getting a little greasy. For those of you who have not seen Woody's back, isn't that gorgeous? Woody's a full craft instrument. Very, very, very happy to represent full craft. They make awesome musical instruments that sound amazing and are absolutely things of beauty. You really want to hang them on the wall sometimes in a frame. I'm getting everything, the end piece down here, the end block, the head blocks, and make sure you get the back of your headstocks. Now, this stuff is not going to harm your tuning gears, but it may dull them up a little bit, so make sure you give them a bit of a shine, and there are cleaners and things you can use to shine them up specifically, but do them last. Go ahead and do the wood first, and then you can take care of that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get this side, and then we're about done. So it doesn't take very long, and you are really going the distance here to make sure that your instrument is around for a lifetime. If treated well, your instrument should outlive you and should be around for future generations, for your family, for some lucky person on eBay. All right. Woody is all feed and waxed up. And now, that's gonna sit for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll do the buffing. So stick around. All right, time has passed, and as you can see here on Woody, uh, it still looks you know, wet, and it is still wet, but that oil and that beeswax has had time to settle in, sink into the wood, and is doing its job. So now we just wanna get that excess off of there so that we can string everything back up. So basically you wanna take a fresh um, rag or towel, whatever you're using, and just start wiping that stuff off of there. Now, while you're wiping off the excess, you're also continuing to get it down into the wood. And just once again, make sure you get everything that you hit the first time. You should have hit everything the first time, but if you've discovered for some reason that you have missed a couple of spots, sometimes I just go ahead and pick up some of the stuff that I'm getting off of the instrument and move it over to the area where I might have missed and it's going to be okay pretty much. Come around the back side, both sides of the fretboard. Now depending on the kind of fretboard you've got, like you've got a winch style that has those little uh, cracks and waves in it, sometimes you'll find that it's kind of hard to get the excess stuff out of there. So kind of work at it and you might even want to get yourself a little soft bristle or brush and that'll help get that stuff out of there. I went with a winch fretboard once. Once. <laughs> then I'll wipe the back. And I had mentioned that you would take one cloth and you would go ahead and you would wipe it and then you'd come down and polish it. And you can do that. Sometimes I just take it to this stage and once I wipe it off, I leave it. So you really don't have to go another step. But if you find that your dulcimer is just excessively slick to the touch, you might want to come back around again and just give it a little shine. looking good and this really just 
is so healthy for a wood instrument. Because wood, as we know, once it's separated from the tree, it's a dead thing. And it will tend to dry out if you don't take proper care of it. And I know a lot of guitarists out there use a humidifier in their case to keep the wood from drying out. Depending on how much you use the dulcimer, or where you live, if you live in a dry climate, you might have to do this a lot more often. And there we have it. Well, like I said, Woody's a pretty new instrument, but he's looking pretty amazing and shiny right now. And I probably won't have to do this for another four months or so, depending again where I end up traveling and what conditions are like when I get there. So once again, let me show you what the bottle looks like. I'm going to put him back up here on this dulcimer stand, which was created for me by Gary Sager of Prussia Valley Dulcimers. PrussiaValley.com is the address for that. The product. This is Howard Feed and Wax. It is fantastic. It's about time for me to get another bottle, but this bottle has lasted me for about four years, believe it or not. You're not using a whole bunch of this stuff, and I don't use it on all my instruments, just the ones that I actively take out and uh, that are out in the atmosphere, getting all that dirt and gunk and everything else on them. So take care of your instruments, and they'll be around a good long time for you to enjoy for many, many years. After you're done with that, I let it sit for a little while longer. I may come back by and give it one more swipe with the cloth, put new strings on it, and blammo, we're good to go. So thank you for watching this episode of Dulce America. I've got some more very fundamental things coming up here this month, and then we'll get back to doing some uh, song demonstrations, workshops, tips and tricks, and hitting the road. Got a lot of road trip stuff coming up. Thank you once again for watching, and we will see you next time.